can start with the moment that everyone is talking about. <laughs> the hug inside the courtroom mm -hmm. with the woman responsible for taking the life of your, of your husband. Um, I don't know. Everything was over, and so I went to the solicitor that was representing the state, and I said, can I go hug her? And she, she kind of like, what do you want to ask her? You know, I don't know. She, it's like she was afraid that I was going to say something to her, and I said, I don't know. I just want to hug her. And then she asked her her lawyer, and then we went over there, and I just hugged her, and I said, you need to let yourself out of the prison that you've put yourself in, because I know that she's not doing well. And, um, and then we just talked a little bit and laughed, and, you know, I told her how, although it is horrible and awful, there have been amazing things that have happened from it, and so I didn't want her to just think of the horrible thing. Like, I wanted her to know that other things, good things, had come out of something bad. From within, does it come that you can have this level of forgiveness and this, this level of understanding and this level of wanting to help, <laughs> to help her? Um. I mean, it comes from the, the basic like, idea that I, I've been forgiven and so that I have, to, I have to forgive. And not have to because that makes it sound like a, you know, but like I have been forgiven, so what you do is forgive. And when bad things happen in people's lives, then you have a choice because bad things are going to happen to everybody at one time. Like that's just a reality. And you have a choice at that point of what you want to do. And people would say, like, you know, to fight, you'll get justice and you'll get this. And, you know, justice has become this idea that um, I'm going to get revenge or retribution or, you know, like I'm going to get even with this person. Like, that's somehow what justice has become. And this whole time, that's not what I've wanted, you know, because she knows what she did. Like, oh, yeah. she knows every day when she wakes up and her son isn't there. And she knows every time she thinks of me or thinks of my children, you know, and she knows. She doesn't need to be reminded every day. You have a book. Yes. You brought this book into court. Um, I just decided one of the things I said um, in court was that there was so much that I didn't know and that I don't know if I knew any of those details that it would matter. Um, I suffered a brain injury that um, made me lose my memory from the night before. So I don't even have any memories of p packing, getting in the car that day, anything. And, you know, of course you want to know answers. But So I said that... Um, well, I won't ever know those answers. There's one thing that I do know about, and that's Glenn. <laughs> and so I said um, that I brought this book, and um, several of his friends wrote things about kind of who he was and what they meant to him. And um, and we and I, of course, put pictures in because I like to look at pictures of my husband. So <laughs> <laughs> your children, she has children. Yeah. How do you explain? all of this to them. Mommy doesn't know how to forgive that well. You know, like, mommy is mad sometimes, and I feel mad, and I want to be mad, and I, you know, and we're allowed to feel that way, but we're not allowed to make the other person feel bad. They already do. You know, they're handling that on their own, so what we have to do is, is forgive them just like Christ forgave us. Do you think that there'll be a continued relationship? I really think that there will be. Um, because um, they have said that um, they want the um, 500 uh, community service hours to um, be something that, <laughs> sorry, be something that Glenn would be vested in as well. I just want her to be okay, you know, because I'm okay. And I just want her to know that I'm okay and that she can be okay. And I, I choose to live.